official Young Democrat of the Year. And this honor was bestowed uh, to her at an honor ceremony at the River Restaurant in Wethersfield. In attendance were Connecticut State Senator Richard Blumenthal, Wethersfield Board of Education Chair Bobby Granado, Senator John Fonfara, Mayor Amy Bellow, Democratic Town Chair John Gallivan, Democratic State Representative Russ Morin, Democratic Lieutenant Governor Susan Beisowitz, Democratic Party Chairman Nancy Wyman, and the Attorney General of Connecticut, William Tong. Emmett is also president of the Young Democrats at Wethersfield High School and has been for the past two years. She is always the one that keeps members informed of meetings and volunteer opportunities and is also an outstanding motivator. Emma can always be counted on to get volunteers at a political event. Emma recently attended the prestigious Girls State where she honed her leadership skills and learned more about the government process. Emma has worked hard for our municipal candidates and has worked in several campaigns for Russ Morin and most recently Emma worked uh, for Paul Doyle's campaign for Attorney General. Emma has learned from all of these experiences and at a young age has gained valuable campaign experience. Her accomplishments extend beyond just this club. She's treasurer of the National Honor Society and treasurer of her graduating class of 2019. She's also found time to coordinate WHS blood drives. She's a member of the math team, the Art National Honor Society, and the Black Student Union. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I would ask that you join me in a round of applause for Emma Moore. Outstanding. Congratulations, you, Emma. Emma. How do you find time for everything? And I know your um, schoolwork is top priority. Well, I've figured it out over the last couple of years. You know, I have school, I go to work, I have classes. I just, I can kind of know how to prioritize. I like to, you know, like, I do what I like the best first. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's great. I was talking to you recently about all the colleges you're visiting. Yes. Well, best of luck on all of them. How many was it again? Uh, well, I probably visited like a little over 15, but I applied to 11. Congratulations and best of luck Thank on all of that. Anybody with questions for Emma? We're just so proud of you. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Thank Emma. Thank you. We do. We have one more um, little piece that we'd like to show. If I could have uh, Mr. Thomas Moore, principal of Weathersfield High School and proud father of Emma Moore, please come up to the podium. Uh, Mr. Moore is going to show us a video clip um, with regard to something that's going on at Weathersfield High School that again aligns with our strategic plan and uh, providing career opportunities and those soft skills necessary for student success in the real world. So Mr. Moore has a, a clip that he's going to show us. Just the space bar. Yeah. Right. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for good having evening. me. Uh, each Friday morning at Weathersfield High School, a group of educators meets, uh, administrators, counselors, special education. Um, we also have representatives from DCF and uh, probation. Uh, and we get together and we talk about one of the most important aspects of education, and that is attendance. Right, so in our attendance meeting, we look at students who are struggling a little bit, some uh, who need a little extra attention, uh, and we also brought to light the idea of punctuality and tardiness, right, because again, that is uh, affecting some of the uh, instruction for some of our students, right. Two of the uh, members uh, of the team, or one is our career coordinator, Mr. Mark Danaher, and also uh, technology, edu uh, technology education teacher Sue Coco uh, had an idea, had a thought as to how maybe we could try to motivate, try to educate, try to encourage our students to be as timely as possible as we do along with many other uh, schools in the state of Connecticut throughout the nation, right, have a little bit of difficulty with punctuality, right? So 
through the efforts of Mr. Danaher, who has been doing an outstanding job at our school, and Ms. Coco, right, we were able put to put together a little video that we showed through the advisory program, and I'd like you to see it this evening. Right, so, here we go. Welcome to this Career Advisory Lesson. I'm Mr. Danaher, the Career Counselor at Weathersfield High School. In this lesson, we are looking at the importance of punctuality. We wanted to find out if there was a magic ingredient to instill good habits with teens. So we challenged ourselves to find professionals who could share their insights. We talked to a college coach, a professor, a local employer, and even a Weathersfield High alum. Pull your weight. We're competing in a very tough world, and we have to do things uh, right, and we have to be faster than the rest of the people that we're competing with. You've got to prepare kids to, to, to be ready for right, a life after college, and I think sports does that to kids. In high school, it's like, mom's getting you up, now you got to do it. It's a big, way more of a responsibility in college. When you're hired somewhere, you're invited to be part of a team, and people are counting on you to do your very best. I try to uh, teach my students here at the college uh, that this is the real world. They like to think of when they leave here, they're going to the real world. This is my real world. And this may be their practice or rehearsal, if you will, for their entrance into the employable world. Obviously, usually the first time, I'll let it go. Because, you know, everybody makes mistakes in life. You don't want to punish a kid for off the bat. But if it's, uh, if it depends when it is in the season also. Uh, but the first time I let it go, next time, you know, either you're going to do some conditioning or I send you home. Um, you got to prepare kids to, to, to be ready for right, a life after college, and I think sports does that to kids. As a captain, I feel like if you're coming late to practice, you're already not focused. So it's either you got to do a punishment or you just got to get sent home, you know? Like, everybody here is supposed to buy into what we want going on, and we're here to be successful. So if you're late, you're, you're not focused right at that point. So you just got to figure out what to do with it, basically. Being late to a college practice, um, I think the fair consequence is, you know, you should not be able to play the next game because, you know, as this is a job, you know, it's a legit thing, so you got to be able to show up on time and even earlier than on time because it's very, it shows you're committed to the team, it shows you want to be here. Usually your, your, uh, your decisions, your actions affects others, and sometimes when you're late for a meeting, a meeting you're affecting other people's actions in their days. So, it's important to make sure that it's not consistent, I think, more than anything. That time is important, you know, uh, in the world of athletics, you know, time for practice, you time for games, because in the real world, you, gonna, you can lose your job. If someone's repeatedly late, um, then in my mind, they really send you a message that they don't value their position, they don't value being part of your team, and there's probably somebody else who would value being a member of your team, so you're better off having that person move on to somewhere else and uh, use that position to hire somebody new. Everyone's going to be late once or twice or three times. I get personally pretty stressed out when I'm late. Um, so I've had occasions where uh, I have tight time frames to airports. Uh, that my, my biggest stress factor is I miss a plane flight and then all of a sudden people are scheduled to meet me somewhere and I've missed the flight. I can miss a whole day of meetings or training. A lot of my trips are international, so a day can get lost by being late. Are you more important than somebody else's time? I played baseball growing up, and every time, my dad and I were the first ones to the field to really make sure we were warmed up and ready. You feel prepared. There's times on the job now where I can feel that. I get to presentations sometimes. I'm ready. I'm confident. I feel like I know what I'm doing. Everything's going to be OK. There's been some times where I haven't been there 15 minutes early, say I'm there five minutes early and I feel rushed, I don't feel ready and everything's looking at you and it, it gets a little more challenging. So from a young age my parents have always insisted on being on time, being early, being prepared and being ready. The reality is that everyone's time is important so no matter what level, no matter what title you have, so I think you should respect it. So when it comes to things like being on time, that's a great way of showing your level of dedication. If you're the kind of person that shows up at the last minute or late consistently, what you're communicating is you don't much care. And if that's the case, people won't want you on their team, they won't want to work with you, and they're not going to give you challenging assignments because they frankly aren't going to trust you. 
they do need to know that they fit into a bigger piece of the world, that they don't stand alone anymore, okay? That what they do has consequences, good, bad, or indifferent, on others. And that no matter what we do as people, we're part of a team. So that video was a part of an advisory lesson. Uh, we have a weekly advisory at Weathersfield High School, and I was uh, very pleased that Mr. Emma, uh, Emmett invited us to uh, show this this evening because I think with uh, the strategic plan, it really informs some of the aspects uh, that you as a board are looking at through the strategic plan and that we are implementing at Weathersfield High School. Right, thank you. Um, any questions for Mr. Moore, John? The kids built this too? They, they did the video and the music and the whatnot? Uh, through uh, the technology club and through the classes with Ms. Coco, right? They were a part of this, right? But primarily for the most part, it was Mr. Danaher and Ms. Coco. Awesome. Very nice job. Yeah. All right. mm. Any other questions? Well, we had a, a wonderful career advisory board meeting last night, and we did see this. And... Uh, Mark is doing it. Mark Danaher is doing such a nice job presenting the soft skills that our students so need as they go out into their careers. And we talked about careers last night too, and um, the vision that we're hoping children have of what their future is like and goals to attain. And I, I, it, it, they're just great, a great group of people. These things are fabulous for our students. Thank you. I would agree. I think they're very important. Mm -hmm. Right. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Okay, thanks again. And next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes for our regular Board of Ed meeting way back on January 22nd, 2019. Anyone see any corrections? Okay, may I have a motion to approve these minutes? So moved. And a second? Second. second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, those minutes are approved. Also on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes for a special Board of Ed <coughs> meeting on January 14th, 2019. Anyone see any corrections? Okay, may I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Okay. She's watching us. Ellen's watching, so. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> that's right. Those minutes are approved. And finally, on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes for a special Board of Ed meeting on February. Oh, the other one was January 14th. This is February 14th, 2019. Are there any corrections? May I have a motion on this? So moved. Okay, and a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Those minutes are approved. Okay, at this moment, anyone wishing to make a public comment, please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that public comments are limited to five minutes. Okay. Mr. Emmett, you have communication to share? Yes, I do. Thank you, Mrs. Granado. Good evening again, everyone. Uh, we had our first snow day of the school year, much to the delight of our students and the disdain of our parents. Uh, this happened on February 12th. Uh, at this point in time, we're now looking at the last day of school occurring on Friday, June 14th. I have already been asked by multiple teachers across the district, please, Mr. Abbott, no more snow days. We'd like to finish on a Friday. So we'll do the best we can, but obviously um, student and staff safety come first and foremost. I want to talk with you a little bit this evening about the budget uh, with the cancellation of the last board meeting due to the weather. Uh, the superintendent's proposed budget was presented at the special board meeting that Mrs. Granado just mentioned on February 14th. With the shared services model implemented, we're looking at our operating budget actually decreasing by 0.83%. Uh, this is the result of custodial maintenance salaries, benefits, maintenance, and repair budget lines shifting over to the town and the crossing guard budget shifting over to the Board of Education. 
Uh, we have followed the presentation with the budget workshop held on February 20th. Uh, I know we do have another uh, workshop planned for tomorrow, although we are looking at this point in time in postponing that. Um, one of the things that we talked about at the budget workshop last week was utilities. Right now, utilities are still carried in the Board of Ed budget, and there was some talk about shifting utilities over from the board to mm -hmm. the town. If that takes place, that would be an additional $1.3 million leaving our operating budget, and we would see our uh, decrease in the operating budget for next year uh, go to a minus 3.1%. Uh, so we'll have more communication out. We'll need to pull the board for a, uh, an upcoming budget workshop. Again, we understand that the town will be meeting uh, next Wednesday. Uh, to talk about their budget so we'll want to make sure that uh, we have that latest up-to-date information <laughs> with regard to phase two i had this queued up for the meeting on the 12th uh, the work on phase two uh, is ongoing uh, the group met on february 11th for an update uh, we had a wetlands inspection take place over at highcrest as part of the due diligence phase and an inspection of uh, the area around the hammer and stanish park property Malone and McBroom will use the data to formulate a variety of scenarios for elementary buildings. We're looking at five different scenarios coming forward. We expect those scenarios to come forward within the next couple of months. Uh, Highcrest Portable, we are working on the design now. Um, I have been in contact with the state. Thank you very much. It took a long time to get a response. Happy to know that we've gotten that. The state will not support reimbursement for portables that are in for an indefinite period of time. So what we may end up doing here is we may be able to uh, facilitate this through our phase uh, two as well as our long range plan if we can take Highcrest offline within a certain number of years. The state reports that you, generally speaking, portables are uh, okay with them for a two to three year period. We know the portables at Highcrest as well as at Charles Wright have been there way, way longer than two to three years. And we also know that our um, long range plan talks about 10 years. So we'll have to see if we can make that work. Uh, Silas Dean roof, roof over the auditorium continues to spring leaks. Uh, I was over there late last week and we had buckets and pails everywhere. Uh, Tremco, the roofing contractor had been out to assess. Uh, they confirmed that the roof section needs replacement. I'll be touching base with Ms. Katz on the status of this project as well as the latest uh, projected uh, cost. Uh, this may well be a project that we need to complete during school time. Uh, that's not one of my favorite things to do. Uh, if that needs to be done, we will certainly plan that process out uh, with a lot of forethought and make sure that we ensure a minimum uh, of disruptions to the learning process. Also at Silas Dean Middle School, pleased to report that Rosalind Bannon has started in her role as Silas Dean Principal. Uh, first day was yesterday. Interim Principal Donna Schulke is overlapping this week to assist Rosalind with the transition. So I had the opportunity to meet with her yesterday. Very excited to be here in Wethersfield. Instructional Supervisor for Technology Sarah Harris has joined the district as of February 20th. This position replaces the director position held by our beloved friend Keith Raffanello. Sarah's role will be focused upon the direct support of classroom teachers around the integration of technology. You know, you as a board have supported the rollout of one-to-one. -one. We need to make sure that we're supporting our teachers in the classroom and making sure that they have the skills mm -hmm. necessary to implement those uh, machines in the classrooms. Weathersfield High School will welcome Tara Yusko as assistant principal beginning next Monday. Tara will join us from the Seymour Public Schools. Um, she is currently serving as an acting principal while her principal at the middle school is uh, out for jury duty. She has already begun her transition, including an interview with Blue Eagle News. Uh, and this is also a perfect time to thank Mr. Paul Cavallari, uh, who served as our interim assistant principal at the high school this school year. Mr. Cavallari was an excellent compliment to the administrative team and his support of the students in the district are greatly appreciated. On February 15th, I had the opportunity to attend the team event at the Connecticut Science Center through my uh, connection with Goodwin College. This was an outstanding opportunity to do some great networking. I had the opportunity to meet with folks uh, from the realm of higher education, including uh, president of a couple of our community colleges. I also had the opportunity to speak with my colleague Craig Cook from Windsor. Um, they already have a manufacturing uh, program in place at Windsor High School. So we'll be scheduling some time to go up and take a look and see what they're doing as we embark upon uh, our plans for the future. 
And speaking of Goodwin College, they'll be visiting our manufacturing space at the high school uh, to further our discussion on partnering to offer students access to a blended high school college manufacturing program. That'll be happening on Friday. Um, the guidance department at the high school has identified approximately 30 interested students, uh, and our expectation is to continue to work through the logistics to get to a point where we can make this plan a reality. And then finally, uh, best of luck to our winter sports teams. Uh, they are now entering tournament season. Hard to believe that it's gone so fast, but um, we've got a girls basketball game occurring this evening over at the high school. Um, we've got wrestlers going to states, hockey's in the tournament, boys basketball's in the tournament. We have swimmers uh, headed to states. It's uh, indoor track. We had some excellent uh, results there as well. So it's been a great uh, winter season. And with that, it's communications. Also, just another team, the dance team did a fabulous job, too, this year. Champions this mm -hmm. year, yes. Yep. Any questions for Michael, Diane? Our, <clears throat> the Goodwin College, are we going to get a formalized plan presented to the board? Yes, uh, as I had mentioned uh, previously when we had talked about this, um, my expectation would be we would go through student programs and services so you can see the connection. One of the things in our prior meeting, Goodwin provides kind of a... Um, a roadmap for the courses that are needed. So the guidance staff took that roadmap and then cross-referenced with student schedules and student backgrounds to identify kids that would um, would meet the expectations of this program. It is a rigorous program, and the expectation would be that we'd be looking at both a dual high school and college credit for this. And who who will pay for the college credit? That's one of the logistical pieces that we're working out at this point in time. Right now, one of the nice things is we have the space and Goodwin has the staff. We don't have the funding and the budget for extra staff mm -hmm. and they've got the staff. So we're looking at the potential of actually having their staff come in and work in our high school with our group. I, I would like to request that when, if it goes to programs and services, that it also be brought before the full board. <coughs> I get very nervous with these for-profit colleges. Well, if I may comment on that, I, I know that I know a lot of what Goodwin does, um, it's all good. Uh, whether they're for profit or not, that doesn't mean anything. I think we should. Uh, Mark Scheinberg, I think, is a visionary. That'd be nice. Thank you. Mark Scheinberg, who is the president of Goodwin College and Goodwin College in general, I think are, he is a visionary in higher education, actually getting kids and people in careers where they come out and they can earn a living a good living. Um, they teach things that are applicable in the, in the new economy that we have and any exposure we have to them or any other school that takes this approach I think is positive. We certainly reserve the right to evaluate it to see if anything is amiss. But I, I can, and I understand um, uh, um, Diane. Diane's, um, I was gonna say that, don't worry. Diane's uh, objection and worry about it but um, I don't see the profit motive as being counterproductive here. I think they've demonstrated, this college has demonstrated, not just with our high school, but I, I think they're doing with other high schools in the area, this kind of uh, partnership. Anyone else? Okay, thank you, Michael. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, we do not have any action items this evening, so we'll move on. We do have our first read of the proposed policy for 405, which is on the criminal history recorded information. Does anyone have any questions on this policy? All right, because we'll be voting on it at our next board meeting. Oh, John does. <laughs> this is a brand new policy? This is a state requirement, uh, Mr. Morris, and this comes from an audit that was done by uh, the State Homeland Security around our background checks, how we maintain uh, information related to background checks and fingerprints. So given the fact that this is a state requirement, I asked the question of Shipman and Goodwin, why didn't we see it in the policies? And they said they do not include it in their policies because of the fact it is a state requirement. So mm. the policy as you see it is exactly as it comes from the state of Connecticut. Um, I provided you with a copy of the audit uh, some weeks back. This was supposed to go on the uh, February 12th board meeting. And we also discussed this last night at last policy night, and yeah. planning. 
Um, so this is one of the expectations of the audit that we are to uh, adhere to. We have 45 days with which to answer to the audit. Um, one of the things that had to be done is we had to do training. So yours truly got to tr uh, do the module training and get certified and let the state uh, Homeland Security Department know that yes, we are in fact trained. We have a couple of other staff members in the HR department that will also be trained for this. So uh, this is a, uh, a pretty much a, a standard policy. Uh, as, as it is from the state. Any other questions? Okay, so we'll be voting on that at our next board meeting. Also tonight, we have a presentation of the strategic plans quarterly report. Michael? Yep. Good evening again, everyone. Welcome to the uh, next quarterly update of the strategic plan. Um, our focus over the past quarter has largely been the same. You've heard a lot of the theme this evening already, and that is um, getting our students uh, out into the community, getting our students uh, involved in opportunities to uh, support uh, lifelong learning, 21st century skills, and career development. Uh, in addition to that, we've also continued to focus on our partnerships with uh, community groups as well as uh, businesses. And obviously on the uh, HR side and the business side, we focused in on maintaining opportunities to try and bring in funding from additional outside sources as well as looking for efficiencies. So. Again, just to remind you, the plan management, this comes directly from our strategic plan, and this is the uh, process by which we assess how our plan is going. Our governance committee consisting of John Cassio and uh, Bobby Granado. We do meet, we do discuss the process of how things are going. We are looking to obviously ongoing, uh, le on an ongoing uh, basis prioritize our strategies and our actions relative to budget and impact. So again, student achievement. This should ring true in everyone's ears, continuously restructuring curriculum and instruction to provide students with a continuum of increasingly challenging opportunities to demonstrate and understand the desired behavior such as academic success, social emotional intelligence, collaborative problem solving, civic awareness, and contributions in critical thinking. So again, these were the actions that we have been focusing on over the course of this year. Actions one, seven, 7.1, Eight and 8.1. So let's talk a little bit about where we've been from the uh, earlier quarterly report to now. We had mentioned that the uh, connection to the Travels Insurance Company for student programs had begun. I'm very pleased to report, uh, and you know already, that the actuarial group came and did a presentation. We have had a uh, an additional shadow day up at Travelers where we had an additional 20 students attend. They have an actuarial summer camp that's being planned now that our students will have access to. And uh, the folks from the Travelers are also working with Weathersfield High staff to develop an invest program and it's currently in the planning stages. That invest program will provide uh, programming for students in the areas of investment and finance. Uh, we have multiple area schools that are already involved with this invest uh, program and it's been very well received in other um, districts in the greater Hartford area. As I mentioned earlier, our collaboration, that potential collaboration with Goodwin College around manufacturing is more than a potential. Um, this is cer certainly in progress at this point with Goodwin scheduled to visit on Friday. And as I mentioned earlier, we have 30 interested students at this point in time. 
fundraising efforts to support learning opportunities. We've done one fundraising effort already at Puerto Vallarta, and you're asking, well, what does the fundraising go for? Well, it goes for trips. It goes for the cost of transportation to get our kids out of Wethersfield High School and out into the community. So Mr. Danaher reported last night that uh, he still has some funding left for approximately two more trips, but we are talking about other fundraising opportunities to uh, make sure that we get our kids out into the community. Uh, the Career Advisory Board is meeting monthly. Uh, as Mrs. Granado mentioned, this met last night, and actually we have a new connection to a health care opportunity for 20 students. Mm. The opportunity for our students to go and engage in uh, robotics and looking at the robotic surgery so they have access to uh, head into the room. And again, this is all organic, it's all homegrown, and it's coming from the connections that we've made with the Career Advisory Board. We're certainly very, very proud and happy about that. I uh, want to mention again, I've mentioned this earlier in the year, but we've got a, an appellate court session to be held at Wethersfield High School on uh, April 23rd. I believe, Mr. Morris, are you going to be involved in that? Yes, it's April 16th. It is April 16th, all right. So we have a planning meeting set up for May 5th, so, or excuse me, March 5th. Let me get Next the, week. Okay. Next week. Okay. So we'll make sure that we get a press release out after um, we solidify all the logistics. This will be open to the public. It will um, obviously be during the course of the school day, so we have a lot of logistics to go through on this, but that's coming up as well. Our expectation is we have students in seeing court in real time, and I can think of no other public schools in the area that have done something like this. So I think it's a great opportunity. Can you give us those dates again, Mike? Yeah, let me check on that to make oh, okay. sure <laughs> for that, just to make sure. All right, I'm we've got a planning, and I'll make sure I get it into the Friday Thank update. You. Yeah, we've got our planning meeting slated for March 5th. So, uh, And then uh, last but not least, in terms of progress may being made, last night we talked a little bit about this. Um, we are developing a career fair at uh, Weathersfield High School. We're in the planning stages of that now. We're looking at May of 2019. Is it May 23rd of 2019? Yeah, it I may well be. So that might be the connection be there, the 23rd yeah. piece. So we'll have a lot more for you on that as it gets closer, but we're looking at bringing in area businesses. Uh, I would say the Weathersfield Public Schools as an employer would also be there um, representing and uh, talking with our students about career opportunities that we have for them for the future. Be remiss if I didn't talk about the um, PD offerings. You know our strategic plan talks heavily about professional development and coaching. Um, we had a lengthy uh, schedule, which you had in your Friday update, about uh, offerings that we had across the district. Um, from social emotional learning, implementing the curriculum that our teachers have written over the course of the summer, we did another session of ABA training, which supports our ABA programs at Webb. Uh, instructional behavioral strategies to grow independent students. Uh, that took place, we had a consultant in uh, to focus on that. Uh, Google platform technology to support student learning. We had our uh, TEL assessment for English language learners. Uh, art teachers, I have to say, I saw the art teachers. The art teachers were on the road. I went to the Connecticut Science Center and that's where the art teachers were. They were connecting STEAM opportunities to art. So science, technology, engineering, and math, um, and how to integrate that with art. Physical education teachers um, actually partnered with the town's bike and pedestrian committee. Um, I actually serve on that committee and met with that group uh, just last week and talked about the potential of utilizing a fourth grade bike curriculum that the gym teachers, through our leader-leader model, um, are interested in bringing in and teaching to our kids. So we're talking about how we can go about getting helmets, how we can go about actually getting bikes and doing a biking, uh, like a bike rodeo for our fourth graders. Um, I like that because it's a homegrown event. Uh, and again, shout out to Mary Gathers from Webb who has uh, spearheaded this. And then also with professional development, we sent our counselors out to community colleges to talk about what uh, opportunities our kids have at community colleges, what they are looking for, and again, tips uh, and uh, ideas. In terms of goal two, our civic and family engagement, I mentioned this earlier about making the walls of the schools more permeable and providing opportunities for students to learn outside and community members to learn inside. And here's action four. 
One of the things, as you know, at our uh, January uh, 22nd board meeting, we had the United Way come in and do a presentation on the Alice report. Uh, as was stated at that meeting, 34% of our Wethersfield families currently meet Alice requirements. That's asset limited. Um, they are employed, but they struggle to make ends meet. Uh, we met uh, last week with John Prescott from the United Way, and we're talking about taking part in the Alice Challenge, which has with it funding uh, to the tune of $20,000, which can support our families. We have a kickoff event on March 20th, so if there are any members of the board who are interested in participating in that, I already have somebody who's expressed an interest from town council. We're looking for multiple people to serve on this advisory committee and talk about how we can best fund uh, programming for our families. Obviously, you know shared services. The shift for custodial maintenance has been completed as of January of 2019. That is also reflected in our proposed budget. Again, I continue to participate in the quarterly Chamber of Commerce meetings. These are great meetings to be able to talk about what's going on in the district and to make connection with area businesses. Uh, we participated in the State of the Town Breakfast. We discussed the strategic plan there, both myself as well as Mrs. Granado. Uh, meeting with elected officials at the correct legislative breakfast. Um, I did attend on behalf of the district and had a nice opportunity to talk with um, Representative Wood as well as Senator Lesser. I'm very uh, pleased to have the opportunity to talk with them and talk a little bit about what we have going on in the district. And then also, um, in my role of being more of an external uh, superintendent, I participated in a CAP superintendent's meeting with House Minority Leader Themis Clairdis. We talked about educational policy, we talked about bills, and the impact upon school districts. Um, very interesting, got to meet superintendents from across the state, um, superintendents from regional districts, and folks that I don't typically see in the Hartford area. So um, that was another certain, certain positive. And then last but not least, management, operations, and finance. I mentioned earlier, we are still focusing on our phase two work. Um, we are continually evaluating our ongoing expenses. As Matt talked about this evening at the finance committee meeting before, we are um, in good shape financially this year um, with about $48,000 to the black, so we're happy about that. And again, you see actions one, two. And our progress, phase two is currently in progress. As I mentioned earlier, it's mapping out five options for the district's elementary schools. Once that plan is finished, we will get that out to the public. We'll talk about which uh, plans work best and what is the best uh, avenue to move forward for our district. We had favorable audit findings for financials as reported by Bloom Shapiro. We have submitted a school safety security grant to the state. Uh, and again, kudos to Matt Kazaka as well as Hal Even for making that happen. Again, collaborating with United Way through the Alice Challenge for grant funds to support affected families. And then last but not least, this one I added, I just got notification from the state today that Wethersfield is uh, eligible for the Competitive School Readiness Grant Program through the CSDE. So we'll be taking a look at that and seeing if the um, RFP is broad enough to support what we need here in Wethersfield, and we may be able to get some additional funding there. In terms of next steps, where we're headed, again, uh, the continued connection to school-based activities is evidenced in weekly school updates. You get those updates from each school. They directly align with the strategic plan. They talk about what um, actions and strategies are being addressed. Again, we certainly need to recognize potential budget implication and impact upon timelines. Uh, that's just a reality. And again, I think the important thing to continue broadening external connections for student opportunity and funding sources. And again, the next update will be coming up in May of 2019. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Ms. Schremmett? Mike, what, what's what? the cost of phase two? Do you remember basically offhand? 45. Excuse me. I want to say off the top of my head it was, <laughs> I, I know because we, so let me get that to you in the Friday update. Happy to do so. Mm -hmm. Okay, and just a reminder how this all came about. Um, John Cassio and myself in a committee with the administration and then in our retreat, we came up with our strategic plan which is a focus for the entire system 
um, for a duration of time, not just for one year. And we're setting up quarterly reports so that we know exactly where we're moving along and also obstacles that come our way. Um, this is being implemented by the administration and staff. Um, and at the end of the year, we will have a cumulative mm -hmm. assessment of exactly what's been going on. So very excited about this. And the other thing, Bobby, is we're going to find out things that do not work. Right in the district mm -hmm. so we won't repeat the problem over and over and over we'll right. kind of mm -hmm. like move on and away or find a different direction or different mm -hmm. avenue to go with okay and, and, and i like and i appreciate all the work mike and you did bobby on this speak and john because it, we used to shelf these things, remember, John? We'd write them, and they sit on the shelf. <laughs> so now, the, now that I get an update, I'm really feeling much better about knowing what's going on. So I appreciate the work, John, right. Bobby, and I mean Mike, John, and Bobby did. Right. Thank you. We purposely made it a skinny plan, right, John? Yeah, that's skinny so plan. that people would look at it, and yeah, we would use it. And it's usable. I know I can speak for the whole board when I say our Friday updates are fabulous. Yeah, they are. And so often they refer to the strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And it's also good for everyone to be able to have and go back and look to see what's happening in the district. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Michael. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. Next on our agenda are meetings held, and our um, finance chair, Kevin, owns most of this, so he's going to start out with our finance and information management. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I think the best is to be basically combine finance from January 22nd and uh, from earlier today on, on the, uh, the 26th, as that gives you the most recent updates that we have for the current year to date, as well as the next year's planning. Um, as Mr. Emmett mentioned before, year to date, um, we were about $50,000 under budget um, favorably. Um, really of note uh, is that uh, our uh, business office, uh, Mr. Kazaka was <laughs> doing some more sleuthing, um, <laughs> has found out kind of what, we think we found out what our electricity problem is, especially within the high school. Um, long story short, that the high school is separated from the rest of the buildings in town on a different um, uh, energy supplier. Uh, and that was on a variable rate that kicked in about six or seven months ago. So we're kind of tracking down those contracts and who, what, where, and when, who entered them, when, and basically how. Um, so thank you again for finding, for finding that finally, I appreciate it. Um, and then um, also, as Mr. Emmett had mentioned previously regarding the, eight, the 1920 budget that was presented to us about a week or two ago, um, it is a 0.83% decrease. This is due to the shift to the town um, and shift from the town. That is both custodial maintenance going to the town and the crossing guards coming in. Um, uh, your uh, percentage increase from our previous budget is about 3.98%. Of that, it's about 0.9 is discretionary. Um, so over 3% is actually our, the contractual obligations that we must have. Um, and beyond that, it was also discussed at our finance and information management meeting uh, earlier tonight was there could be some further responsibilities taken from the town. That will be determined um, hopefully within the next week or so. So um, once we get that information, the board will get, would like to come together again for another workshop to kind of discuss our next steps. Great. Thank you. Any questions for Kevin, John? Kevin, um, just out of curiosity, what – does it look like our, uh, if the town does not take our utilities, where's the projection for us as a board? And if they do, I know there were some numbers, minus 3.1%. If, if, if they do take the utilities? Do not. Or they it, do not? You said do not, John? If they do take the utilities. It would, it would be about 3.1% decrease. Okay. And, and then if, if they don't. And if, and if, if they it don't, stays status quo, it's 0.83% decrease. Okay. Okay, um, another meeting held was the Wethersfield Early Childhood Collaborative, known as WEC, and I went to that on February 11th. Um, 
WEC is a wonderful collaborative, and the mission is that all our Wethersfield children, birth to eight, are healthy, developmentally successful learners and connected to the community. Um, PEP 2019 is up and running thanks to funding from the Board of Ed and the town. Um, there are 10 people who have signed up, and their number one goal is to be more connected with the Wethersfield community for themselves and their children. Um, an organization that is proving to be very beneficial for us as they network after they graduate. The family learning program is successfully running as a preschool program. Um, we are noticing there's a problem with transportation for some families, and we were even brainstorming ideas of answers such as Uber gift cards for families. Um, we stated that in January the WEC website had its highest number of visitors, a great tool for young families. We also reported that the data on the grade three reading scores um, and applying for school readiness grants. Liz Frazier from the Connecticut Association for Human Services spoke to on the kids count data, a source of info for our school system and anyone who loves numbers would love all this. She also spoke to the two gen work to get families assistance focusing on not just the child to be successful in our schools and community, but to work with the child and the family. I thought that was an interesting refocus. Okay, we had our special Board of Ed meeting, and I'm going to ask Kevin to speak to that again because it was on our budget. Sure. Uh, similar to what we were speaking about before, this was uh, an opportunity for the administration, specifically Mr. Ember, Mr. Gazaka, to present the budget to us. We were able to answer some questions and get some clarifications specifically on uh, the amount that's coming, uh, being shifted from the board to the town. Mike, thank you. We All right. so dedicated, we gave a Valentine's Day to do this. Yes, <laughs> that's right. We were, t we were all together that night. All right, the CREC Council. Ginger, can you speak to it? Um, yes, um, in January, the CREC Council approved a resolution which they had been talking about for a few months, asking the legislature to resolve the recent funding shortfalls for the magnet school system. Mm -hmm. Magnet schools are the primary method for implementing the Chef versus O'Neill settlement agreement. At the February meeting, discussion centered around House Bill 7109, an act concerning interdistrict magnet school program funding which grew out of that resolution. That act has already had um, at least one public hearing and is working through the system. There's really no telling whether it'll get passed, just like everything else in front of the uh, state mm -hmm. right now. Um, but the act provides a short-term solution to the ongoing funding challenges by proposing a 5% increase in magnet school funding from the state to the magnet schools, which would help us a lot because because in our budget, both the one that Matt Kazaka prepared, which had an estimate and which he told us tonight, um, his estimate was actually a little low because they did finally get the final number. Um, the towns are having to absorb a lot more because the state hasn't been stepping up to its uh, commitments. So we're hoping that that um, House bill will pass and that um, the individual school districts such as ours will uh, get a bit of a break on the magnet school tuition. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Ginger on this? This is going to be a big ticket item if it doesn't pass. Hmm. Okay. All right. So, Kevin, again, we did have a budget workshop on our budget. Yes, thank you. That was our first uh, budget workshop where not only members of the board but members of the town council were all invited. We had some members of 10, and it was another opportunity for us to ask the, uh, Mr. Gazaka and Mr. Emmett some pointed questions about uh, why certain things were moving around and also trends that we see uh, that we can plan for in the future out years. Okay, any other questions there? Okay, policy and planning. Chris? Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, real quickly, we uh, talked a little bit and um, the superintendent explained the uh, security uh, protocol that was uh, given to us by the state of Connecticut. Uh, the other bit of uh, action we did was we uh, discussed once again our cell phone policy, uh, relayed uh, the existing uh, policies that were uh, adopted by this body uh, via the Shipman Goodman model. 
uh, which mostly concerns the, the proper use of these devices in terms of uh, uh, proper usage for, for education, protecting the um, uh, cyber integrity of the school system and all that. So uh, with the assistance of um, the high, uh, Mr. Moore, uh, we came up with some, we think are pretty rational, uh, fair uh, guidelines uh, and uh, consequences for a misuse of uh, a cell phone or a personal technology device. That's our new term of our personal technology device, which can include these little phones on your little Dick Tracy wristwatches and all the other uh, accoutrements of two-way uh, communication. So um, yeah. we have we put together uh, a, a series of um, increasing penalties for misuse. Uh, first uh, time possession is a warning, um, notify parent. Second time, notify the principal. Thir uh, the third instance, we actually um, uh, take the phone and wait to have it uh, retrieved by the parent in question. Um, and then we go into more punitive steps after that if uh, if the the person still continues to abuse that privilege, uh, including a 30-day suspension, and then after that, the suspension of use for the balance of the school year. Um, we do believe, or a number of the members believe, uh, this will enhance the quality of, uh, of uh, the atmosphere in each classroom, uh, help uh, teachers as well manage the classroom, and I think respect people's uh, time uh, very important for the children or in the students to understand that, you know, as we said in that uh, first thing about showing up on time uh, or showing up early, it's also important to respect people's time in the classroom, the instructors as well. Uh, and we know this will also apply to staff as well, which is important. Mm -hmm. um, so we're moving forward with that. There's still be plenty of time for people to comment and engage. I think I mentioned to some of you, I've met with two uh, PTOs. Um, elementary school PTOs and they were um, pretty supportive in general, but we need to communicate this. I think it's a reasonable step and very um, doable uh, based on what we've heard from uh, Mr. Moore. And um, you'll see it in its first form the next time around in print. And that's all I have. Okay, thanks, Chris. It was interesting, Chris, last night at the uh, Career Advisory Board, they had mentioned that in the business world, they want the phones away. So th this is a great way to teach our students how to prepare themselves for their career. Yeah, I, I don't make any, I'm, I'm one of, uh, it happened to me, that we joked about the other day, I was in a, in a work setting and the phone went off and my <laughs> jingle, Who's which is, it? my jingle, which is the theme from the man from uncle, and now I'm really dating myself here, but, and, and I almost, you know, had to dive out of the building in shame. So, uh, I mean, we're all not immune to it, but I think the earlier, uh, that we can, you know, pose on it. And the example we set is, as the staff has set and we set, uh, is important. So that kind of bring the le level of noise down, so to speak, and distraction. So, Any questions for Chris about this policy, this soon to come? Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, we do have... One more. You have one more, Kev. Do you want to speak to uh, it? Well, we spoke to it yeah, earlier. This about just ditto? The, yeah, the year to date from this, from this year. All right. We do have meetings scheduled. We have a special meeting of the Board of Ed, which I will communicate to you. That's another budget workshop. So it is scheduled for tomorrow, but perhaps we will put it off for a week, waiting for more information from the town budget. Um, and there's another WEC meeting, which is on March 11th. It's going to be in the town chambers. Um, for the life of me, it's not going to come to me, but it's uh, somebody is coming to speak, and it's on behalf of early childhood. Um, Two-gen two program. The two-gen program, thank you. All right, is there any unfinished business? All right, um, we have public comment. Anyone wishing to make a public comment, please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may, may I remind you that public comments are limited to five minutes. Okay, are there any board comments? Anyone, John? Thank you, Bobby. I just want to um, say that the video that was shown today by the high school, they did a great job. And I, I just think that that needs to be out there. And um, you yeah, know, we're I didn't get an opportunity to ask, but are, is it going to? 
be put in the guidance office? Is it going to be, you know, brought together in schools online? Mm -hmm. um, and we were talking about that last night. What way can we get it out there so that? But it is going to be in the advisory um, classes, so that way it does reach everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was great. Um, and the just to go along with the strategic plan update. Um, the other motivation behind this is that we have a difficult time telling our story as a school district. And this is what keeps us on track to tell the good things as well as to observe things that can be changed into a positive way. Mm -hmm. So I think that really is important for all of us to realize, whether it's this board or the future boards, that they have to continue down the, a good track and maintain that kind of balance. Um, the other thing to uh, just piggyback on uh, the superintendent's comments regarding the next steps for phase two, um, and he you know, kindly went over the different five different scenarios of the boundaries within our district, within the schools, and when we're looking at the boundaries, we're not only looking for the educational space for the student, but we're also looking for the uh, geographical definitions of the building as well as traffic flow of the yes. building very it, you know it's it's uh it's an in-depth uh situation that we're looking at so it's just not space it's the boundaries of the space that we can handle in the area of where a school is going to go mm -hmm. and what we have for existing schools and as you can see from the elementary up to the high school there's traffic is an issue so that no, that certainly is uh um Good We're point. trying to be ahead of the game Good point, John. Mm -hmm. Excellent in, in that point. particular area. Um, the other thing, uh, we're, we're looking at our sites, and are the, uh, is there any deed restrictions? You know, um, I think that's imperative that we find out before we go off what we really have to do, the homework before, before we get in too involved down the road. So we really have to do some deed research on the uh, areas that we're looking at. Um, and also the cost for these restrictions mm -hmm. that we'll impose on the Board of Ed. So I think that um, you know we're moving forward. We're in phase two. It's a lot of work. Uh, there's an amazing, amazing amount of detail that come before us that we just look at and go, really? Are you serious? Um, and I hope that uh, not only the board, but the community will embrace the efforts that we're doing right now to make what we need to do for Weathersfield. Mm -hmm. Thank you, John. Any questions for John on that? The facility is, is, the committee is moving along with this. And you're right, John, there's a lot of work, a lot of data. Okay. Can I share something, Bob? Elaine? Um, thank you. Um, I would just like to say thank you to Mike Emmett and Matt Kazaka for the way the budget has been presented. Mm -hmm. We've had years where we've had to have four or five budget meetings, and the clarity of which it's presented by Matt and Mike is much easier for me to comprehend and others, I think. Yeah. So we don't have sizes of phone books going home with us to peruse through. It's been very, very, very easy to understand, and I appreciate the hard work they did on that. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Well, I have quite a few comments because we haven't been together very much, and there's a lot of meetings that go on that aren't really committee meetings from the board. So a few remarks. Um, the Hunger Action Team met on Friday, Friday February 8th, um, to continue their incredible efforts to work with the Weathersfield community to reduce hunger. And I think just as importantly, to make the community aware of the needs of people in town. The Weathersfield Women for Progress are the dazzling dozen for this month doing the food drive. South Sea Middle School is working on March Madness food drive. So good work and good luck to grade seven and eight because the winners get to watch NCAA basketball. Um, the Weathersfield High School Liter Literary and Art Magazine for the first semester, I believe it is, recently came out. It's called Pieces, um, where artists and writers unite 
Um, it's a high school publication made possible by a grant from the Keene Foundation. So if you can get your hands on it, it's so beautifully done. The artwork is incredible, and the writing is so deep. Where, where did you get it I, at the high school, I believe. Get it at the high school. At the high school. Okay. Yes. Thanks. And speaking of the Keene Foundation, I went to Keene on Kids, which is part of the Keene Foundation. They continue to provide the after-school program for our students. The programs continue to be incredibly popular and successful in both the elementary schools and the middle school. The foundation has two upcoming events that I hope everyone will support. On May 20th, the Unico Keene Foundation Golf Outing at the Weathersville Country Club and the 5K Race on Sunday, June 2nd. Um, the library was represented at Keene on Kids with Brooke Berry, the director of the library, and she also does teen programs. Um, please see their brochure for info on all this. Um, they offer a drawing program, emoji cookies. They did a Valentine votive and a pizza day. There's about 50 to 70 kids at the library um, on after school programs on a program day. I guess Michael Emmett was there to check out their after school activities. Um, I recently received a most interesting report about the Weathersfield High School team in the Connecticut Ethics Bowl Championships. Um, led by John Sands and with assistance from Karen Baldwin, the team did remarkably well, putting on a great display of intellect and logic. I'm hoping that next year the students and teachers will continue this very challenging competition. Um, to continue, we had a security team meeting with Michael Emmett, Chief Satrian, Hal Even, Chris Healy, and myself to discuss the security at all our schools. We discussed police presence at our buildings, a more diligent focus on not opening secure doors for others, and the security of our buildings during after school activities. We will continue to meet monthly to discuss security and to work on any issues that may come up. The Board of Ed has made security in our schools our number one priority. Um, had the opportunity to read at the Family Center last week. The pre-K students and their parents were a delightful group to work with. I read to the little ones and then talked with their parents afterwards. The families are from Eastern Europe, Syria, Japan, and Peru. The excitement of being part of the community is very evident. The parents talked about their fears of their children going off to school. Doesn't sound, it sounds very familiar. Um, and they very much want to be part of the experience. My thanks to Kim Bobbin for inviting me and for the work she does with our littlest town people. Um, also, and I'm inviting everybody to do this next time they have it, I enjoyed painting at the high school for Goodbye Winter, Hello Spring. No one will ever see my masterpiece. It will not be on display. Um, but Andrea Haas and her students organized a unique evening of art, food, and drink. Um, keep an eye out for this event in the future. It was fabulous. Um, we had our career advisory board last night. Mark Danaher, um, Ken Lesser, Michael Emmett, myself, and wonderful people from the community are working for more awareness of career choices for our high school students. Um, and last, the Weathersfield Education Foundation will be meeting tomorrow, tomorrow night, when, Thursday night. Everyone is invited to attend. It's at the Country Club at 7 o'clock. The Weathersfield Education Foundation has an event planned for Thursday, April 25th at 6.30 at the Weathersfield Country Club. The event is sponsored also by Unico and the Weathersfield Foundation with Gina Barreca speaking on Growing Up Italian, an event to enjoy and for a great cause. And there'll be more information to come on all that. So we were kind of busy in those weeks, huh? A little bit. Um, and I know things are going on at the high school. Eden, yes, can you tell us what's you. going on? Absolutely. Good evening. So first off, thank you for mentioning the Pieces Literary Magazine. As the um, yes. president of the group, um, that means a lot to have you mention it. Congratulations. Thank well you. done. Um, as a senior, it's always scary to think, you know, what's going to happen with the group after I leave, especially after our past advisor left and retired. We feared for the group at first. We worried that students were going to come back with a new advisor. And luckily, we've had a lot of underclassmen actually join the group, a lot of talented freshmen. So I feel very confident leaving 
the group in their hands. And this was a very nice publication. I'm very excited about it. And I look forward to our publication in the spring. Um, also at the high school, students, very lucky students, got to take the National Assessment of Education Process Test today. <laughs> I was so jealous I wasn't picked. <laughs> All my friends got to go. I didn't. <laughs> That's fine. And we're also honoring National Say Something Week, a Sandy Hook promise. Um, WHS will be holding a Green Day on Friday, March 1st, in support of Say Something Week. And we invite the board to wear green on Friday. Great. Thank, Thank you, Eden. Any questions for Eden? The high school is always exciting to go into. Always. It really is. Okay. So if we're all done, may I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Okay. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming tonight and for watching. The board wishes you all a good night.